Since the LeBron era, Cleveland has been kind of... But last year, they made the playoffs for the first time since LeBron, which is... It's been... How much, how much time at this point? It's been a long time. And they've got a pretty good core. But today, I'm going to be talking about if they're contenders or pretenders. It's a whole part of the series. I'm doing every single team before the season starts October 22nd. Hopefully, I can fit all of them in. I'm trying to do three a week until then. So, also, I lived in Ohio when I was like four. So, I get to do this. I also found this at Goodwill. Can you tell? Because where's the... There's like a highlighter mark. Or like a crayon. Something. But one of the biggest problems that I have about the Cavs team is that Evan Mobley and Jared Allen just still don't know what to do with each other. And that's... It's very frustrating, but we, let's check this out right here. I mean, so Ev, Evan Mobley is a four. He's not a five because he starts with Jared Allen and Jared Allen is a five. So there's a bunch of debate on if Evan Mobley should even be a center or a, like a five or if he should be a stretch four. But a, according to, I mean, basketball reference and just the stats, he, uh, <laughs> he makes 0.4 out of 1.2 three pointers over the course of his career. Three, uh, yeah, from three point, which is, that's not good. He averages 16, 9, 3, 1, and 1. And he shoots 60% from 2. But that's not, like, amazing because... I mean, look right here. I mean, he's shooting around 60% from the field. But it's, like, on 11 shots. So it's, like, cool. He made he made 6 buckets. And so he, it's, like, he, he's good. He's not bad. So I just said Evan Mobley stats. 16, 9, 3, 1, and 1. Now, listen to this. Jared Allen. 17, 10, 3, 1, and 1. So you got two guys who do the exact same thing at the exact same rate, basically, right? Look at this. Evan Mobley, 11 shots, like si around 60%. Jared Allen, oh wow, si over 60%, but like 0.4 less and he he's just a little bit more efficient. And they both don't shoot three-pointers. So like, how are you gonna have two bigs that can't shoot threes and they both do the exact same thing? They're both averaging 16, three, one and one. 16, 10, three, one and one, sorry. It's just like, it's just weird. And we saw that in the spacing in, in the playoffs. Like, they just couldn't get anything going. Especially when you have a very dynamic scoring, like a shooting guard, like Donovan Mitchell and then Darius Garland, he's getting there. But outside of that, there's not a whole lot of, like, great support for this Cavs team. And so I just think that they should make a move. I know they re-signed both these guys over the offseason. I, mean, I think they should make a move to get rid of somebody. Move Evan Mobley to the, to the five, if that's how they want to do it keep Jared Allen at the five because he was an all-star like two or three seasons ago, right? And then uh, trade, I almost said sell, trade <laughs> trade Evan Mobley and then get some pieces back for him and kind of bolster that offense. Like it, it doesn't make sense to keep both of them. It's just been four years and they haven't figured anything out. So that's just kind of the confusing part. And if you're new to the channel, you've been seeing this, this is one of my favorite little toys or like tools ever. It's called Darko. It does a bunch of different stats based off of uh, box plus minus. It's basically the only thing but we get a lot out of it. So we can see Evan Mobley over the course of his career was like, in terms of, this is a daily plus minus. So it's like every single game. That's just every single game he's ever had. Uh, he started out his career as like negative and he kind of broke through and now he's barely at a one. So, which isn't great. That's not like amazing. So offensively, he doesn't even provide, or he's actually a negative on offense. He loses 0.39 points every time he's on the court. So not like crazy, but usually with players who can't do a lot of offensive things, you want them to do a lot of defensive things and it doesn't show up there either. So it's like, is that is that because of Jared Allen? I mean, we look at Jared Allen as well. I mean, look at this. He, does, he basically a neg on offense, which is like, that's okay. But he's, he's a pretty good plus on defense. It's not bad, but look at the percentiles. For centers, both of these guys are centers. They're, they're listing a center for some reason. Evan Mobley is in the 70 percentile of offensive and then in the 60th of defensive for centers. Now we look at Jared Allen and he's over in the in the 80s and almost 90s for both and it, it's just is a lot better. And then you can see over the course of Jared Allen's career, he's over here going up and down and up and down, but he's, he kind of is up and he's on a stead. He's, he's on the up and up. So I just think that it's important to like focus on like making it work i guess you you may you've been in the playoffs you've been in the second round like it but at the same time it's like why not be as good as you can be i, I don't know does that make sense and i just want to know that this would be a completely different conversation if they were both studs on defense like if it was like yo they both can't shoot but they are like locked down best defensive guys in the league they're just not evan mobley's like okay people are like oh he's like fast so he can guard people on the perimeter 
not really we haven't like seen like lockdown but if both of these guys were just like screw the offense let's let d mitch and garland handle that and like max Struess and anybody else who wants to shoot threes and, and we just are on defense if they do that i think this could be a lot better of a team they're already a really good defensive team on paper everybody on the whole thing they give a lot of effort like guys like isaac okoro come in can't really shoot but he plays defense dean wade plays a three but he's like 6'10 max Struess also plays good defense so it's like they've got a lot of good defensive people on this team so i think that if evan mobley and jared allen just like locked the freak in on defense and you just gave more of a load to, to Mitchell and Garland. I think that could work out better if you want to keep all you guys. I don't know. It's just kind of, it's just confusing. So I'm trying to give my opinion for something that honestly, I don't really like know if it would work or not. There's a thing called uh, the historical career trajectory. This gives us a lot of good info. So the, the blue is Jared Allen. He's kind of like over here. Red is Embiid, shoots up. Gobert is kind of here. Victor shot the freak up and Mobley's here. So. Look at, I mean, look at Gobert. Gobert is literally, and has been, he's down a little bit down, but Gobert is better on, in all aspects of the game than both of those guys. Here's the crazy thing though. Like, I just don't know why they don't lock in on defense. Jared Allen's a great defender. He's always been a great rim protector. So Jared Allen's D, DPM, I guess, is 1.87. It's like, not great, once again over here. And the offense is trash. But you compare him to a guy like Joel Embiid and hit, Embiid's defense on paper and on the stats and stuff is better than Jared Allen's and his offense blows Jared Allen's out of the water. So it's like, why can't they just like pick something? Like, let's look at it. Let's look at uh, Gobert. What is, how does Gobert doing? Look at this. Gobert is completely negative on offense, but his defense is through the roof. He's on the 100th percentile of defense. So it's like... I don't, I don't know what is going on in, in Cleveland, but they need to figure this out. Here's a little stat thing with lineup projections and stuff that shows the best lineups in the league and possessions and all that stuff. So the best offensive, like the best net Cavs team, the best net Cavs team is nine and a half, right? Their defense, 4.1, 5.5 offense, pretty good, like pretty balanced. I mean, they're literally, that lineup is one, two, three. They're seventh, no, sixth, seventh, seventh in the league. Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, Max Struess, Dean Wade, Isaac Okoro. So the fact that like what I'm talking about kind of makes more sense when you realize that Darius Garland and Evan Mobley are not in their best lineup. And they've almost have a hunt or a thousand possessions played over the past season. That's like, that's, that's a decent amount of time to show these kind of numbers. So I, I think I've said my piece with the whole Evan Mobley, Jared Allen thing. I just, I just stopped yapping. I'm kind of just like spewing at this point. I'm not a front office guy. I've said that multiple times. You can criticize me all you want. I, I, I'm just kind of yelling. Like that's not even, I, I'm trying to provide an option that I think would work, but I don't know how anything, anything works logistically, obviously. So the next major question I want to answer is, is Donovan Mitchell as good as we think? So we're going to look back here to the, the histor historical career trajectory. Here's Damian Lillard in yellow. We got uh, Halliburton, Brunson, Maxi. I got all the guards in the East. And who is at the top of all those guards in the East? Statistically, is Donovan Mitchell by a landslide. He's like, if this is almost a six and a four is like over here where kind of Jalen Brunson's at, he's like a whole two points ahead of everyone else in the East in terms of guards. So Donovan Mitchell is that guy. I mean, he scored 70 points last season. Was it last season or two seasons ago? I don't know. I don't remember we should look it up but anyways that on mitchell i mean he averaged right here i got it right here last season he averaged 27 5 and 6 that's pretty good for like a 6 1 6 2 combo guard right i think he can leap to higher heights than that honestly i think he can get to hopefully the 30 bomb mark where he can average maybe 29 30 maybe 5 and 5 so we answer the question very briefly is if like if donovan mitchell is like that good like he, yes he's, he's good he's very good but is he good enough to help the Cavs like beat anybody no, not, not really. I mean, we all know that it's the wings and the bigs in the East. Giannis, Embiid, Tatum, Brown. Like, that's just like the four. A lot, that's a lot of big guys right there. And we've just seen that the guard play in the East just it doesn't really matter anymore. There's just so many better bigs and wings in the East that are just dominating. And without a solid supporting cast in Cleveland, I don't think Mitchell is that good to like help them actually contend for something. So that being said, my verdict is that they are pretenders this year. They're not actually contending for a title. They can make the playoffs, but I don't think that they actually have a shot at getting anywhere. I don't, if, I don't think they can sniff 
the Eastern Conference Finals. They might get to the second round, but I think they're just going to get molly by any teams of like, you know, the Bucks, Celtics, Sixers, like the Knicks. That it's just, there's just better teams on there, and Donovan Mitchell is not good enough to just solo backpack and just carry everybody to the finals. Like, there's, it's just not an option right now. I think they need to make some moves. It's very evident based on what I've been saying that I think they need to make some moves to bolster their roster a little bit and to get back into contention very seriously. Maybe get LeBron back. Who knows? I don't know. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be wild. That's all I got for today for the Cavs video. Um, We've got a whole bunch of other videos. I'm doing every single team before the NBA season starts. October 22nd, I'm trying to do three a week. Uh, last week didn't do a whole lot because school started, but go check out the playlist. Um, yeah, dude, I, I like these videos. I, I will have a video for your favorite team by the start of this, the, uh, the semester, by the start of the season, I promise you. That, that's the whole goal of this. So wait for your team, check it out. Let me know how you guys like these series. Uh, I'm trying to do a lot more of like interactive looking at stats because that's what I like to do. I don't like just like throwing up highlights and just mainly because I get banned. <laughs> So like, I don't really want to do that now, but I, I like looking at stats and going in depth. So if that's what you guys like. Let me know. Cause I love it. So that's all I got for today. We out.